and welcome again to my videos for General Chemistry 1. Today we'll dive deeper into the structure of atoms and find out more about what they're really like. By the end of the video we'll have a much more accurate picture of how atoms look and behave. Way back in the third video we learned about the Bohr model of atomic structure. It was a real breakthrough and helped explain a lot of the behavior of atoms and the way they combine to form molecules. But it turns out the Bohr model is actually not very realistic. Electrons don't orbit the nucleus in circular paths as depicted in the Bohr model. Why not? Well, in the last video, we learned that particles, all particles, including the electrons and atoms, have some properties we usually associate with waves. And one of the important properties of waves is that they're spread out in space. So electrons aren't like tiny ping pong balls that have a definite surface and travel around the nucleus. So what's a more accurate view of the electrons in an atom? It turns out that we can get a better picture of the electrons using four numbers, called quantum numbers. The first number is n, and it tells us the average distance between the electron and the nucleus. We've actually seen this number before. It's the number we use to describe the electron shell that the electron is in. As we mentioned in an earlier video, n is an integer. 1 for the first shell, then 2 for the next, and so on. In principle, there's no limit to how high n can be, but realistically it won't get too high, because after a certain distance, the electron will be too far away to feel attraction to the nucleus anymore. So far, n gives us a picture of the atom that's just like Bohr's model. It's the other three quantum numbers that make things very different. The second number is given the symbol L, we usually use a script letter L so that it doesn't look like a capital I. This quantum number tells us the shape of the orbital the electron is in. Unlike what the Bohr model shows, they aren't circles. The exact shape of the orbital depends on the value of L. Like n, L will be an integer, but unlike n, L can be as low as 0. If L equals 0, the shape of the orbital is spherical, and this is also known as an s-orbital. So what does this shape mean? Well, it's important to know that it does not mean that the electron is a particle on the surface of this spherical shape. Remember, we know that electrons can behave like waves, and waves are spread out in space. So an electron in an s orbital is spread out over all the space represented by this shape. It's a bit more complicated than that, and you'll learn about the details when you take PCHEM, but the general idea is that the electrons spread over the whole orbital, not located at a specific point on the surface. So, when L equals 0, we get an s orbital, which is spherical. When L equals 1, we get a shape like this. It looks a bit like a peanut or a dumbbell, and it's called a p orbital. When L equals 2, we get a shape like this, which is called a d orbital. And when L equals 3, we get an f orbital, which looks like this. You've probably noticed that the shapes get more and more complicated as the value of L gets higher. Unlike N, L can't be just any integer. It can only be as high as N minus 1. So, for instance, if an electron has N equals 3, then L can only be as large as N minus 1, which is 2. So, that means L can be 0, 1, or 2, but not higher. If n equals 8, then L can be 0, 1, 2, and so on, up to 7. Each value of L has a different shape, and each has a different name. We saw that the names of the orbitals are s for L equals 0, p for L equals 1, d for L equals 2, and f for L equals 3. After that, the names of the orbitals just go in alphabetical order. So L equals 4 will be a g orbital, and L equals 5 will be an h, and so on. So the quantum number n tells us the average size of the orbital, and the number L tells us the shape. The third quantum number is m, and this tells us the orientation of the orbital, that is, the direction in which the orbital is pointing. Like n and l, m will be an integer, 
and it'll have a value between positive and negative L. So if L equals 1, M can be between negative and positive 1. So it could be negative 1, 0, or positive 1. As I said, the different values of m tell us the orientation of the orbital. So if we have l equals 0, it's an s orbital. m can be between positive and negative 0, so it can only be 0. And that means there's only one possible orientation for an s orbital. If l equals 1, it's a p orbital, and m can be between negative and positive 1. Here are what those three orbitals look like. Notice that each has a different orientation. If L equals 2, that means we have a d orbital. So M can be between negative and positive 2. Here's what those orbitals look like. The fourth and final quantum number has the symbol s, and it tells us the spin of the electron. It turns out that electrons behave as though they're spinning like a top. This spin can have one of two values. You can think of it as a top spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. So there are two possible values for the quantum number s, and these are positive one half and negative one half. Every electron has a value of either plus or minus one half for s, no matter what orbital it's in. That last quantum number might seem especially strange to you. We started our discussion today by saying that electrons have properties like those of a wave. But spin is something that particles do, not waves. How can a wave be spinning? The short answer is that electrons aren't really spinning. Instead, they're doing something that we can't see. We don't really know what it is. But it has some similarities to spin, so that's what we call it. But nobody really knows what this thing that we're calling electron spin really is. However, we do know that this property, whatever it is, can have two different values, and those are positive or negative one-half. So let's put all this together. Suppose we have an electron in the n equals 3 level. What are the different values that all the other quantum numbers could have? Well, we know that L can be any number between 0 and n minus 1. So it can be a number between 0 and 2. For each of those, m could be between negative L and positive L. So when L equals 0, m must also be 0. When L equals 1, m could be from negative 1 to positive 1. And when L equals 2, m can be between negative 2 and positive 2. Finally, for each of those combinations, s could have a value of negative 1 half or positive 1 half. So altogether, you can see that there are quite a few different possibilities, 18 of them in all. Of course, if we had started with a different value for n instead of n equals 3, we'd have a different list. Remember, each value of L has a different shape. In this case, they're either s orbitals, p orbitals, or d orbitals. Also, each value of m has a different orientation. Here's what each of these combinations would look like. Notice that the value of s has no effect on what the orbitals look like, so both the s equals minus 1 half and positive 1 half electrons can be in the same orbital. We'll use what we used in this video to do a lot more stuff when we talk again next time. For one thing, these orbitals explain why the periodic table has its strange shape. Have you ever wondered why the periodic table isn't just a simple rectangle? The orbitals will tell us why, and that's coming up in the next video. So until next time, have a good week! <laughs>